Welcome back to another edition of the Pitch Part and Puff Podcast. My name is Roger, a.k.a. RGB. Appreciate everybody tuning in here for the 4th of July weekend recap show. We had a real busy weekend on the golf course, four days in a row out there. Uh, we're going to have Fairway and JR jump on here shortly to break down some of that for you. But before we do that, let's take a shout out time and give a shout out to our sponsors. Uh, first, we're going to start with GolferCBD.com. Make sure you check out GolferCBD.com. Use promo code PPP10 to save yourself 10% at checkout. Uh, Golfer CBD, they have a bunch of different options. They're topicals, truly a game changer with their patent delivery technology. They're strokes ahead of the competition, delivering 10 times more CBD directly to the muscles, joints, than the traditional bombs and creams. The Golfer CBD topicals are easy to apply on the course, absorb quickly, and don't leave any sticky residue, making them a perfect addition to every golfer's essential toolkit. So make sure you guys check out GolferCBD.com. Use promo code PPP10. To save yourself 10% at checkout. Also, if you're local here in the 518, make sure you check out 420 Bliss, located at 740 Hoosick Road, right in the Walmart Plaza. Stop in there, check them out. Everything you're looking for, flowers, vapes, edibles, pre-rolls, tinctures, you name it, they got it. Let Ty and the crew know the Pitch Putt and Puff crew sent you. And then last but not least, we got Trouble Off the T, troubleoffthetea.com, promo code RGB for 15% off site-wide, as well as promo code PUFF. For buy one, get one free on the polos. Make sure you take advantage of that. And don't forget to check out the book. uh, Audio version available on Spotify as well as Audible. Written by Marty Minden. Narrated by Jake Adams from Country Club Adjacent. Uh, It's really a great listen. Take about a day or two to get through it. About four hours total. Uh, Definitely check it out. Um, And use promo code RGB on the website for 15%. And buy one, get one free for the polos. Puff is the promo code for that. Uh, take a quick break, and we'll get into it with the boys. Welcome back to another edition of the Pitch, Putt, and Puff podcast. My name is Roger, a.k.a. RGB. Uh, big night here on the podcast. we got the 4th of July weekend recap show. we got JR joining us. What up, Jay? Yo, what up? And then the one and the only Fairway Mike. Hey, man. Hey, man. What's up? <laughs> I got What's up, it. Man? That's all I needed, Jay. I got the hey, man. I can clip it. No doubt. Fairway, man. Let's talk a little. Let's get right into today, Fairway. Let's talk about today. Uh, season best score of an 82. What was going on out there today for you? Oh, man. I was I was, just, I was burning it up, man. I was playing so good. I see you had a couple birdies. You took the skin, so you, got, you were the only skin out there because all the other ones canceled out. Uh, the birdie on 17 got him a greenie and a skin. So I took home the cash for the skin. Uh, a 42 on the front is a real good score, especially with it followed up with a 40 on the back fairway. That's an impressive round, man. Impressive Four round. on the back in a row. How do you do that crap? Man. Fairway, I didn't impress myself. You came to play today, bud. You came to play. Well, you know what? I played yesterday. When we played yesterday, I played T to green. I played great. I just could not putt. Yeah, like maybe 12 or 13 bogeys. And every one I was either putting for a birdie or I was putting for a par. I missed every one of them, man. Uh, that's a tough course, especially because the, the speed of the green is so much different than what we're used to at Freer. Um Jay, what do you think about Schenectady Muni? It was good. I mean, the fairways aren't wide really that much there. Some holes they are, some of them are not, but... You know, it's not bad. If you miss, though, like, your kind of ball's gone there. Yeah, that place is tough. It's pretty narrow. Um, and, like, you don't know where the pins are doing at the greens or where you're supposed to land it, really. Like, yeah. and it's sure. You're just playing, like, a number and just, like, all right, I'll just hit it wherever. And then hopefully it worked out. And then, like, it didn't work out. <laughs> it was tough because, like, um, I played that course a few times in tournaments, but not enough to know, remember it. And know, yeah, like, the- I don't I remember. I don't know. I, I, that was my first time in like the two, three years, probably. Same. Hank kind of knew the layout of the land a little bit, which helped. But for the most part, man, it was just try to get it to the center of the green and see what happens. Right. And then you go over too short. Or I did good on the part threes, though. I like the, all the part threes there. They're nice. Yeah. And you can, draw, you can get on like a lot of the part fives and two if you're playing, depending on what tee box you're playing. Like I remember hitting like a six iron into one. I hit a five wood in the one. I did have a puffer eagle and up a par too, bro. I hit the best five wood. I was like two eleven to the front. My ball went all the way to the back. I landed it like two hundred probably, and it rolled like through the green almost to the back, like two, 
like 215, 220, like five wood in that heat. Yeah, that was it was hot out both days. It was hot out there. Fairway, what was your favorite part of Schenectady, Muni? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Probably par fours. Well, yeah. the par fours, I probably dropped it on them. Probably 80, 90 percent on two. Oh, shit. Sure. I couldn't put them, man. That's it. Yeah, putting was all tough. See, putting's you know. not, not my problem. I just can't get off the fucking tee. I'm snap hooking. I got fairway yelling at me. Slow down your swing. I try slowing it down, and then I'm now I'm completely like just hooking and popping up to the left. Like it's yep. treacherous out there. It's absolutely treacherous. Once I found it, once I found my drive on the back nine, then I just went low like forty one. Like that's all I have to do is get off the tee box like you. That's it. And I was shooting the low forties. I, I Jay, I call it out to you. Look at this all. All right, good tee shot, par, birdie. You know, I got a chance at scoring. If not, I'm playing. I'm playing the bogey. Right. And then you even miss that sometimes. You get a six. And... Yep. Um, we should play different courses, though, I think. Yep. You know what I mean? Because like that, like that, the, the greens were so tough to put on, man. If we, if we, I say to Don, I go, you know what? If I put it that at Fair Park, it would have went right across the whole green. Right. You know what I mean? I yeah. did like so, the funny, just like the breaks were like, I don't think it was as much as I thought sometimes. And then sometimes I would like speed. I left. Let's see. If you ask Paul, he even said it too. He's like, by the time we got to like almost done, there's like four or five putts that stopped like one ball roll before going in. For yeah. Don, Don was doing that too. That's yeah. What he one was ball doing. roll, dude. I would have made four or five more putts. Uh, Mark, Mark um, put it real good there though. He adapted to the speed pretty good. Yeah, Bob did putt pretty well up there. He did pretty good up there. He what did he do? I got his scorecard somewhere in here. Yeah, I think me and him both tied just on Saturday with a ninety-one. Um, he almost had an eagle on. He got a birdie. It was the ninth hole. He chipped it from about. I give him one hundred and thirty yards, and he stuck it about maybe a foot from the hole. And you know, I'm making him. Hit, I'm making him putt that birdie. Ain't no give me around me. I don't care what it is. So he played. He made it. He made it. All but then right. Pare- I'm not giving pars, man. <laughs> You're putting. Uh, You're Dude, putting. Thirty chances, and I missed all of them. Yes, on like, Saturday, I missed all of them, bro. I was on the putting for eagle, missed it. Then I was hitting some like the par fours weren't long. The par fours were like <laughs> 350, 360, 340. Yep. So I was hitting wedges into them, and I was like leaving myself like ten footers, twelve footers, and I just. Didn't make any birdies. Had an eagle putt, missed it. Had a birdie putt in the same hole, missed it. <laughs> I missed two eagle putts. Who's you play with, Jay? I played with Whitey, Paul Sauls, and Jimmy Hart. Yeah, how did that turn out? Dude, that was a great group, bro. Like we yeah. were, it was kind of like vibing along, just playing good golf. Like I think we all shot like ninety or under, except for like ninety one. I had. I think everybody else was like ninety one or lower. Nice. Well, we got joining us straight out of Crump and Fox. We got Bad Brad. What's up, Brad? Thanks for jumping on, man. Good to see you, fellas. I missed you this week. I'm yeah. be back in New York. You were out there for the with the with us on the Fourth of July, though. So we've got a little recap to do. That's right. That's right. I had a decent day out there. Didn't make any money, but oh no, nope. I did. I hit a skin. I hit a skin that day. Yeah, well, I hit a skin on. The, that's the only money I made this weekend. I hit a skin on eleven, or no, on fourteen, um, Fourth of July. Yeah, that was I, an awesome time. I shanked my tee shot in front of the um, tee box on thirteen, and then I hit my four hybrid about two hundred plus, like two ten to about eight feet, and made the birdie putt. That was the highlight of my weekend. That's it. That's all I did. All I played. I played a hundred rounds of golf, and that's the only good shot I had. <laughs> Fucking terrible. Well, hey, man, any round out there is a good round. No doubt. How was Crump and Fox? Right, Brad? Yeah. yeah. Crump and Fox is beautiful, man. It's uh, It was a tough course because every fairway is either lined with forest or forest on one side and water on the other. So I think I used my driver twice. It was all four hybrids, five hybrids off the tee box. Um, and then you're taking long second shots. You're trying to place irons to get a, a good approach shot after that. So it was a tough course, man. It, 
we grinded. Um, the D flight score that won it, I think, was an 83 with our boy Johnny Resto. Yeah, I've seen that, Johnny. Yeah, J5. Um, and I think I, or no, he was, uh, I'm sorry, 90, <laughs> 93, because I shot a 98. I lost by five. He beat me by five. Oh. So 98 on the course I'd never played. It was it was tough, man, but it was pretty beautiful course. Nice. And they, they do a nice job out there. It was a cool place to play. Yeah, Fairway was just saying he wants to take the PPP to some different courses. So I do have the options, man. I, like I said early in the year, I spoken to um, Airway Meadows in Saratoga Lake about getting up there, doing course reviews, and possibly uh, testing out some different courses. We just got to pick a time and a date to get up there. Yeah, I'm, I'm always in. I prefer to not do it on the Sunday. Keep our regular Sunday. Maybe pop up on a Saturday afternoon or something and go up. It's a good idea. All right. Where is that? That it's course that you place. It is Bernardston, Massachusetts, which is basically Brattleboro, Vermont. Uh, oh, I know where Brattleboro is. Yeah. Right there, an hour and 45 minutes from here. Easy drive. It's a long course, though? It wasn't long. I don't think it was. You ended up with long second shots because you have to lay up on all your drives because there's just too many see? trees on each side. Hear that, Rog? Laying up. That's me. See? Yeah, yeah. You lay up on part twos, Mike. <laughs> yeah, part two, do, on the second hole, part three, you lay up. Hey, you know what Hank did today, man? He got on the second hole and he hit a shot long up on the top, right? So he went to chip it, and he chipped it about two feet, and he went to chip it, and he chipped it on the green, and then he went to putt it, and it went halfway down the hill. And I turned around and said, me and Roger talked about this last week. Listen, if you hit it long, just chip it and let it roll right down the hill, and then you do your two putts, boom, you're done. And Hank wow. turned around and said, Hank ended up with a six, and he still wasn't in. And he turned around and said, I guess you're right, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a round yep. record in that second hole if you let it do that to you. Yep. Yeah, because you try to control your speed and try to control your chip. And if it doesn't work, man, you're that's it. You're still up there. You know what I mean? Just yep. let it roll down the hill and do your two putt and move on. Yeah, that green next next time they do renovations, that green needs to get looked at for sure. I mean, that's just Come on, the, man. That's what that's what makes it interesting, man. It you know is, I mean? but sometimes, Mike, it's to the point where, like, your ball's about to stop and then it gains speed and rolls five feet off the green. It's like, all right, what are we doing here? That's unrealistic. Like, that's Come on, don't take, shit. Of, don't take the thrill of Greer Park away. No, that's what you it is, too. I mean? We played uh, – this guy JP played with us today, one of Charlie's friends and uh, his brother-in-law. And he hasn't played the course since the renovations, and he was extremely impressed just the way the greens were undulated and, and doing all that. It was – it was it was something different. How, how did those two guys play, Raj? Um, Charlie got out there and shot a ninety-eight. He wasn't struggling with the putting per se. He was more uh, second shots, a lot of duffs. I had a lot of duffs today too. I probably had seven or eight duffs in the round today. I'm just tired, man. I played a lot of golf lately. I'm gonna play tomorrow and then take a few days off and then get back out there for the weekend. I think. But uh, J JP shot a 50 on the front and then bounced back with a 42 on the back. So he started getting his getting the groove of things towards the back nine. It was fun out there. Though. You can score on that back nine at Freer Park, man. You, you can. You just got to survive that front. We talk about it all the time. Yep, yep. That front's tough, dude. That front is really tough. There's not a lot of easy holes and there's not a lot of room for error on the front. Yeah, if I can if I can get through the first four holes, like plus four, or plus five, I can go. You know what I mean? Yeah, those first four holes are killer, man. Yep, I got an eight on four today. I hit one. I went where did I go? I went left off the tee, um, kept it left to the tree on my second shot, and then I scolded it into the woods. I ended up three putting. And I was like, you know, it's it. Or I duffed one and then three putted. So it was an eight. I'm like, when I played with you last week, that same hole, man. It's like yep. the same story. It's the same story. What yep. you do with me? The fourth, that fourth hole eats me up, man. If I get, to, if I start off getting good through one, two, three, I know something's gonna happen on four. I nah, swear to God, it's every week. That's all in your head now. Now it is, yeah. Now it's a hundred percent in my head. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, that. me too. You know, my second shot. I, I think. Uh, out of the whole year, once or twice I put it on the green. My ball always goes towards that tree. You know where that tree is there in the left? Yeah, Ooh, right by the right magnet, man. 
I think it's all up here. It's all mental. You know what I mean? It's our joke on Wednesdays, Brad. So we got these group of guys who play in front of us every Wednesday. And literally, they know fairways like the, they duck for cover when fairways hitting because they know what's going over there. <laughs> they just okay. wait for well, see let me tell you something, man. I ducked it on the green today, too. No, you know, I'm, I'm surprised <laughs> to hear that from you because you're a guy that's pretty sensitive to having golf balls hit in their direction. Because I've hit at you several times and I hear about it all the time. So to hear about you doing it to somebody else, I think you owe them an apology. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. The same guy twice, two weeks in a row. <laughs> and yeah. the guy goes up the next week, right? The third week, he goes, Mike, I'm standing right here. He goes, no, I'll let you go this week. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, Fairway shot an 82 today, Brad, and took home all the skins, man. Wow. No kidding, Mike. Good yeah. back. Mike's back. Had a good round, man. Played Fairway's well. back, man. Fairway's back. Him and Kev. Him and Kev. Him and Kev took the cash. Kevin again. Kevin again, man. Kevin's up and down too, man. He either has an awesome week or an awful week. He's that's why he said he shot a ninety today. That's where I expect Kev to be. Yeah, okay, like, that's right in the middle then. Yeah, he I did. expect Kev to be right there. Oh, congratulations, Fairway! Congratulations. Yeah, Kevin. Kevin's like yeah. Kevin's like Mark or you see there. If they take the, if Mark takes his time, he's one hell of a golfer, man. But a lot of guys say, hey. You know what? Look how much time Mark takes to play. I turn around and say, hey, look the way he's playing. Look at the score. Right. You know what I mean? Guys that take their time, they're, they're whacking. They're playing really, really good, man. I, I played today in a tournament, and the two guys I was with were complaining about the guy I was riding with saying he's taking a long time. That guy's an A-flight golfer with a six handicap. We're in the D-flight shooting plus 28 and plus 30. I'm really? Like, yeah, well, the guy you were with in the, in the car? I was riding with an A flight golfer, so the guy had yeah, he had a, like a seven or eight handicap. He, didn't well, have I mean, he took his time. Yeah, those guys they take their time, time, man. Mine was like a drive. He took an extra, you know, 15, 20 seconds where you're kind of ready to see him tee off. He doesn't tee off, and you kind of like look over, and he's got one more practice swing, and. And then he teed off, you know, and it was like, well, I didn't think it was long, but the other two guys were kind of complaining. And I'm like, well, he's also an A-flight golfer who has a routine, mm -hmm. a pre shot routine that he's dedicated to, which we're supposed to be doing too. Right. But Dude, we don't because we just go up and swing. Me and Bob yeah, were Hank just talking like that. about that. Hank takes, a, Hank takes a couple of practice swings, and then when he hits the ball and it goes wherever he wants, and I just stand there and say, hey, just slow down. It's too fast to go. And then all of a sudden, he just takes off. Far, 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 far. He finally gets that speed. We figure it out. You tell him to slow down. He slows down a little bit. And boom, there he goes. You know? I think the only one of us really that has a routine, I don't really see. I see JR has it like with putting. I think I have it with putting too. But like off the tee, Steve's the only one with a routine, like a real routine, I feel like, that we play with. Most of us just walk up and hit it. Me and Bob were just talking about this today. Where, like, when you're shooting a free throw, you go and do the same thing every time. Or even when you're bowling, you're going to line up and aim at the same arrow every time or whatever the hell you're doing. With golf, like, we kind of just go up there. and I mean, it's not the same shot every time, but off the tee, pretty much, it's the same shot every time. So you should be doing the same repetition, yeah. And none of, I don't really see any of us doing it that much, to be honest yeah, with you. I remember watching uh, when Annika Sorensen played against the men several years ago. She played in the men's tournament, and her caddy was talking about on the very first tee box, he was so nervous. He was shaking and everything. And But he had a stopwatch, and he said that Annika's pre-shot routine to the second was right on point where she teed off and hit it straight down the fairway, and her pre-shot routine didn't change. As nervous yeah. as everybody was for her, and she must have been, she was right on routine and just did her thing and hit the ball right. She put, she was on green and regulation every single hole that first day. So she was, you know, but it's all about that routine. That it is. Awesome. And it's – yeah, so now next time I play tomorrow, Fairway is going to be out there. He's going to be taking three minutes in between every shot. He's going to be looking <laughs> at it. He's going to be lining it up. I he was going for a your time, baby. That's hey, it. Craig, you know what I started doing today? I was chipping, right? I was out in the backyard going around chipping. And um, I missed a lot of chips. And I couldn't figure out why I was sitting behind it and hitting the ball, right? So what I did was I closed my eyes right and look down 
You know how your head goes in front of a ball when you're going doing like that? Yeah. I just closed my eyes and just chip like that. And it I just started hitting the ball good. I go, holy <coughs> I shut my hands down, closed my eyes, and just started chipping, man. Well, you found something that works for you. Just say, you know, in the game of golf, it's easy come, easy go. So I, I hope that works for you for the rest of the season. But <laughs> come next weekend, it's not going to work for you. It's nuts. Brad, are you playing next week? That's pretty cool, man. <laughs> Brad, are you I'm in next there, week? I'm up there with Kevin. Go, Kevin, check this out, man. I got my eyes closed, and I'm chipping up there in the back. And Kevin's going, holy gig like this, man. <laughs> <laughs> so now you're going to play golf with your eyes closed? Fairway, now you're going to play golf with your eyes closed? No. Oh. I just I know where to hit the ball. It's just that I either hit behind it or I hit the ball itself. I never hit right that the iron, the wedge, right in between the ground and the ball. You know what I'm saying? Yep. That spot. And I practice hitting that, but my head is too far in front of the ball. I don't see it. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to keep my head straight right down to watch the ball where I'm hitting it. And so I just close my eyes and just hit the ball. Put my yeah. eyes head down too when I'm hitting it. <laughs> what do you I say? <laughs> he closes. His eyes. <laughs> yeah, he, he. Everybody's afraid when Jr. swings a ball. We all close our eyes. <laughs> yeah, it's been that way for me too. I did all right on Saturday. In After back I warmed morning. up for nine holes, I went from fifty. I went from fifty to forty-one, Brad, in one oh. nine. You're all over the place, man. You're all over the place. It's just off the tee with him. It's really the same yeah, as me. It's it just off the tee. It's freaking. It's crazy. Shut it. Work with Fairway Mike next this year. <laughs> well, Fairway, Mike get you fixed. Fairway Mike will get you fixed. Work out with him a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely gotta go with Fairway. Fairway will hey, fix it. Hey, anybody here from Steve? No, he said he had to work, man. I don't know what's going on with Big Steve, man. Um, man, I missed him all weekend. Like, because you could just like pass time around to people and shit. Like if somebody doesn't want to work their weekend, they'll pay you like cash and the overtime that you get to take their weekend from them. Yeah, I can't get mad at them for going to work. I just wish I got a little bit more of a notice than five o'clock the night before. You know, that's all. Like if if there's he knows there's a potential for him to go to work, just tell me on Wednesday he's not going to play. Like, so yeah. I can find somebody and I'm not fucking scrambling. That's all. Yeah, I that's thought he was going to play on Saturday. Well, you know he was, what I mean? he was he supposed loves, to. He loves Mewy, man. Yeah. You know? That's his home course, pretty much. That's where he right. grew up. Playing. He only lives right down the road. Yeah. There was some miscommunication with, with some guys in our league to if they were coming or not. But, bro, um, that, that was crazy, bro. I can't believe that shit. Yeah. It was tough. He literally like like told me on Friday night that he would be there. See, he, when I left the golf course, hey, Rod, see you in the morning. <laughs> And then he texted a guy, completely different guy, and told him that he wasn't coming. And no one passed that message along to us. So we, we didn't know that. that. Message to like the people in fucking charge of the thing. At 9 30 in the morning. You know, I was like, all right, guess. I, then I tried calling Steve on the T box. Meanwhile, I'm like, yo, this is crazy right now. I was, so, I was just so aggravated with the whole situation. I'm like, this is fucking. Because we already paid annoying. for 16 people. Too. So then we had to go back in, ask him for money back, and just it's like damn. Jay, I wouldn't even have done it. You should have let him just ball. donated the money and let him figure it out from there. Because that's not on us. That's craziness. How many people did we have? We ended up with 15. 15. Yeah. How many people we got in the league? 22. 22. 23 now. Well, for the outing, it was only 22 in the league. So I mean yeah. If he was 16, it would have been like almost 80% of the league. So, I mean, we're still going with 15. It's only 22 people. Seven people, I like, can't make it. I don't care. Right. But but now the Binghamton outing is the same weekend as the county, Rensselaer County tournament. So, no. Yeah. Are yeah. you kidding me? The September 5th and 6th. They had air raid greens and stuff were going to be there, they said, when the one we wanted to go. But, Jay, how are they not going to be aerated the week after, though? Well, I'm hoping that they start before that, and it's like two, three weeks before we're there. This trip's a mess. Binghamton's a mess this year. Oh, Yo, the guy oh, has oh. Job, bro. We're going to drive three hours and play on bumpy greens. I'm going to lose my mind. Right. I'll drive home that night. Hop in the car. Let's go. Now, uh, two weeks of uh, aeration, will be, they'll be fine. Those holes will be closed up. Hope so. You'll be all right. 
I hope so. Brad, you Brad, in the- I don't know if you brought this up or not, but, you know, talking about being on time and stuff, you forgot to pick somebody up for golf. on. Yo, July there, there's and- another thing I want to talk about. I got to write down. Yeah, so, all right. So the 4th of July, let's talk about this. I did not talk about this. Um, I went into work at 11.45 p.m. to go play golf at 7.30 in the morning. Like, I got to work, literally, I woke up 11.45, got to work at, like, 12.15, 12.30. And I'm zooming, I'm literally killing myself all day to get everything done. I just We just had to get the day done. We didn't have to work eight hours. We had to get the day done, and we could go. And 4th of July for me in the beer industry is a really busy day. So I was literally killing myself, rushing to get to the golf course. I get there and I'm like, all right, who's with, like, I, I forget who it was. Brad, who were you in the car with? Was it Bob on the fourth? Would you, no, you were Farina. You were Farina on the fourth. So whoever Bob played with, I'm like thinking about who's paired with who. And I'm like, yo, who the fuck am I paired with? And it was like literally a home alone scene. I go, Kevin! Like, I forgot Kev, man. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> Kev. It was literally fucking home alone. I forgot Kev. So luckily he only lives five minutes away. I hop in my car and I'm like, literally, I didn't even have time to stop at the gas station. I had like no gas. I'm like, I might not make it. So I, I pull up to Kev's. I see Jay um, because Jay lives downstairs from Kev or upstairs from Kev, whatever. He's like, yo, what are you doing? I'm like, yo, I forgot Kev. He's like, what? Kev was ha- hammered, half asleep. He was, I had to wake him up like before I left the golf course type shit. Yeah. It was it was a complete disaster, but yeah, I hundred percent forgot Kev, man. Yeah, I'm yeah. like standing around in the parking lot figuring out who's gonna go get him, and we're like, "You're going to get him, Roger." You're gonna go get him. <laughs> Fuck, I gotta get him. I gotta go get him. <laughs> it was bad. I can't believe I forgot Kev, man. Literally, he's home alone. Home alone scene. But yo, fairway, you had a visitor on the third hole this week. What happened on the third hole for you this no, week? Fairway? Come on, man. I'm tired of talking about that box, man. Yo, you That's got the, way, the, these guys don't know the story. The world doesn't know the story. They got to hear it. Brad, you didn't know about the fox picked up my golf ball? I heard a little bit about a fox. Yeah, okay. The the fox picked up my golf ball. The bitch was he started running towards the tee, but he didn't start running towards the fair, towards the green. You know what I'm saying? Sure, it was a fox. It, it wasn't a raccoon it was, or something. Yeah, it, no, it was a fox, man. Yeah, yeah there's so a fox, fox that lives on the, on the uh, in between the fourth. And the sixth hole in that little woods right there. Never seen a fox yeah. over there. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's a den. Somebody told me over on four. Yeah, that's what somebody said. The den is right there on four. I don't know. Do they yeah. eat people? Uh, you know the green ball that I used, that lime green. I'm yeah. I'm thinking maybe he thought it was an egg or something. Probably you know, an egg or he, something. He was going right by, and then he just stopped just like that. Mm-hmm. And he walked right over there and started sniff, sniffing the uh, golf ball. That's when I got out of the cart and I ran the iron and I'm going like this. Get away from my golf ball. And then he just picked it and he just picked the golf ball up and started going the other way. <laughs> it's, that's crazy. Did you catch him? No. I ain't going to go near a box. Did you get your ball back? Yeah, he dropped it in the rough. And, and then the guy in there? The guys that I was playing with, they said, you got to hit the ball where it lies. Hell yeah, you do. Uh, I was going to go pick up the ball and put it back. A guy goes, no, nah, you got to hit it where it lies, man. <laughs> like, the thing was, the ball, the, when the fox got it, when I hit it, it was in the fairway. When the fox picked it up, he put it in the rough. <laughs> Jeez, thank you very much, you know. What is the ruling on that? There's got to be an actual rule on that somewhere. Yeah, the guys, one of the guys told me at the park, he goes, you know what, it, um, down in Florida a, a couple of years ago, an alligator picked up a guy's golf ball and dropped it in the hole. I go, what are you, crazy? He goes, no, it was on TV and everything. The guy got a hole in one. That counts. I don't know. There's got to be a rule about animals, man. Yeah, you can, right now. <laughs> look at Jay. I figured Jay's going to go uh, tackle that see what, what see what it is, huh? Wow. Jay, you looking it up? Look yeah, go look that up. That's interesting. I wonder what the rule is on that. Because what if, like Fairway just said, what if it brought it closer to the hole? Would they, would uh, the people he's playing against would probably be like, "Yo, you got to bring it back at that point." Yeah. It all, yeah. Depends. Crazy. it all depends on where that fox dropped that ball. Is what they were going to tell you the rule was. Yeah. yeah. You see, Brett, there was four guys on two. You know where two is? That's where we were, right by the hump on three. 
four yeah. guys on two, and they were going ballistic. They were going <laughs> crazy. They couldn't believe it, man. They were laughing and joking and yelling and screaming Ooh. at me. You should have seen me. I got out of the cart, and I had an iron in my hand. And I'm going up the fairway, get away my ball, get away from the banging the club on the ground. Oh man, it was it was crazy, Brad. It really was, man. <laughs> they were probably just laughing at you swinging the fucking club at the, like a whip at the. the actually, thing. Did, I think they were laughing at the fox when he picked up the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Anything can happen to free or free. Crazy. Anything can happen out there. Especially that third hole's been an interesting hole this year. That third hole. Yeah, man. The whole year, huh? Oh yeah. Oh, you're... If anything's going to happen, it's going to happen on three. No doubt. No <laughs> Every doubt. Car girl comes around. <laughs> yep. Brad, are you in this week for the pitch putt? Yeah. All right, Jay, you back this week? Because I'm going to get three tee times. Yeah, if I get a spot for my boy, too, that I had show up today. And then... Yo. That sucked, dude. Jay calls me. I'm on the way there. He's like, yo, dude, hope my buddy's there. I'm like, yeah, bro. We got, I got eight already, though. I, don't, I didn't need him. He goes, yeah, I didn't ever text him back. I was like, oh, no. Like fell asleep or something. And then he showed up, and I already had, the, I had Charlie and his brother-in-law yeah. to fill out the spots. I was like, Fuck. Get him on the list for next week. Yeah we, um, yeah, we can get him out there. So I'll try to get the three because I know Mikey wants to play. Farina. And then Farina. So we'll see if we got spots for everybody, and we'll go from there. Awesome. Go from there. Good work. All right, Fairway, I'll see you tomorrow, 1230. Boys, I appreciate you guys jumping on. I'll wrap this bad boy up, and then we'll uh, we'll have a guest on Wednesday, and then we'll recap it on Friday. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Later. Right. Appreciate the boys jumping on the recap show. My man, Fairway, Brad, not even Brad, played the 4th of July with us to give us a little breakdown of that. That was a fun round um, out there on the 4th with McNall, Pastor, Gross, the rest of the crew, uh, 24 guys, a lot of fun. The legends of bed out there on the fourth. But uh, I'm going to wrap this up here by giving a shout out to our sponsors. We got to give a shout out to Golf for CBD. Golf for CBD topicals are truly a game changer with their patented delivery technology. They're strokes ahead of the competi competition, delivering 10 times more CBD directly to the muscles, joints, than the traditional bombs and other creams. The Golf for CBD topicals are easy to apply on the course, absorb quickly, and do not leave sticky residue, making them perfect addition to every golfer's essential toolkit. Throw it right in your golf bag. Slap it on there before you get out. Once you get out of the car, before the round, by the time you get to the tee box, you're good to go. Um, make sure you check them out. GolferCBD.com. Promo code PPP10 to save yourself 10% at checkout. Also, give a uh, shout out to 420 Bliss, 420-Bliss.com. Located at 740 Hoosick Road in Troy, New York. If you're in the 518, make sure you stop up there. Check them out. Let them know the Pitch Button Puff Crew sent you. Uh, also, Trouble Off the Tee, troubleoffthetee.com. Use promo code RGB for 15% off site-wide and then save uh, buy one, get one on the polos by using promo code PUFF at checkout. Appreciate everybody tuning in, and we'll be back on Wednesday with a guest, and then we'll hit you up on Friday with a preview of this upcoming weekend. Later. <laughs>